Hello, forgive that um, flop, but we are here. We are here for Inspire PM. I am Minister Miriam Hasten with Impact Church. Apostle Keith Morth is my pastor. He told me that I needed a theme song because I don't really want to wait on people to get on. Um, I did not cue a theme song. <laughs> so we're just gonna wait a little longer for people to join us and then we will press right on. Yes, you said press on. We will do that. Oh wait, I do have a um a song I use my vocals. We'll do this. Hey Courtney. Um it's an old song old song. I have an old spirit. I grew up Baptist and we um grew up on this song. It's and it kind of ties into what we're gonna talk about tonight. Um it's not nighttime, but hey, we're here. And it says what is this? Got me feeling so good right now. What is this? Makes me want to run on anyhow, whatever it is. Oh, it won't let me hold my peace. Um, Apostle said I needed a theme song, so this is it. I said it makes me, makes me love my enemies. And it makes me, yeah, makes me love my friends. And it won't let me be ashamed to tell the world I've been born. Got me feeling so good right now. What is this? Makes me want to run on anyhow, whatever it is. Oh, it won't let me hold my peace. That's my theme song for tonight because the pastor said I need a theme song. Because I like to jump right into the words. So, if you missed the next part, you're going to have to go back and look at it. Because we are about to start. First off, I do want to thank Apostle Moore and Pastor Le Leslie for giving me this space um, to share. Yes, it is a classic. I, I, you know, I'm an old school apostle. I love the old songs. They do something to my soul and my spirit. Um... <laughs> But um, I thank you for giving me and allowing me this time. I do want to talk about tonight, uh, what is this or what is it? Manna. We're going to talk about manna and the supply change. Manna and the supply change. So Apostle Moore and Pastor Timmons have been teaching about this month of Tamuz. We know that it's direction and change. And we know that the world around us is nothing like we knew it. It has changed tremendously. And we have to adjust in order to be able to survive and thrive in this current climate. What was working last year may not work this year. Matter of fact, if we're honest, what was working last month may not work this month but we need to be able to adapt to these changes so that when we can experience the beauty of manna which is god's supply but what happens when the supply changes do we still look at it as manna as god's supply as a a celebratory miraculous thing that god is doing in our lives are we still celebrating the fact that God has kept us throughout our lives? Are we celebrating the fact that he's kept us throughout this pandemic? Or 
Do we get like the Israelites? Do we forget about the miracle of manna? Do we forget about the supply that literally rains down from heaven because it doesn't look like what we imagine it to be? Because we want something different. We're tired of the same old thing. We ju I just said it today. I'm guilty of it. I'm tired of being in the house. And I'm a homebody. But I said it like this. I don't want you to tell me I can't go anywhere. <laughs> I want to be able to go somewhere even if I may not go. But that's the climate that we're in right now. And even though the Israelites were tired of the manna, this was the thing that was nourishing their body. This was the thing that was giving them sustenance. And just a little while before, they were complaining about not having anything. Now, they're complaining about what they have. I know we've encountered some people that complain, complain, complain. You give them what they ask for. And it's a miracle. And soon they're upset about how or what it is that they're getting because they're getting the same thing. Hey, mom. But what about the sustenance? What about the supply that God is giving us? God is able to feed, nourish, and take care of his people even when things seem impossible. Let me direct you to this scripture, Luke 1, 37, KJV. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. ESV, for nothing will be impossible with God. NLT, for the word of God will never fail. Every translation is simply telling us that God is the God of impossibilities because he and he alone can make the impossible possible. So let's talk about the supply change. I want to go to a familiar passage. Remember there was a drought in the land, three years, no rain, which affected everything and everyone, the food was scarce. The money was funny. The jobs were affected. And I'm sure attitudes were bad because people were hungry. People were trying to figure out how they were going to feed their family, how they were going to get by. And sometimes, you know, we say hangry. You get hungry and you're angry. And people really just don't know how to deal with it. And it's quite telling of these times. We're in a pandemic. We're in a viral and racial pandemic. The food was affected. The jobs were affected. Yes, they sent out the stimulus checks. They sent out unemployment, but everybody didn't receive those. But everybody in some way, shape, form, or fashion has been affected by this pandemic. And I'm sure you have run across someone with a bad attitude. And some of us need to be honest with the, set, with the person in the mirror and repent for the attitude that we've been giving out. Because it does not just affect the outside. It affects us as well. So we need to check our attitudes and what we've been dishing out. Now, this passage that I'm referring to is 1 Kings 17, 2 through 6. And it reads, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and he did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Now, Elijah knew, unlike us, we didn't know this was going to happen. 
I said this morning, I didn't put COVID on my vision board. I had no clue this was going to happen. But Elijah knew because he was the one that prayed for the rain to cease. And God honored his prayers and honored his fast. And he shut up the heavens and it did not rain. But Elijah was subject to the same drought. Elijah was subject to the same famine. But God had already changed the supply when he told Elijah to go to the brook, he told Elijah to go to a certain place and there at that place, he would be sustained. God had already assigned the ravens to come and feed Elijah meat and bread. Elijah just had to get to the brook. See, some people are not receiving manna. Some people are not receiving God's supply because they are in the wrong location. God told them to go to a specific place with specific instructions and that's where the supply would be. And they're wondering why they're not getting because they're out of order. They're not in place and they are not receiving the manna that God has already supplied for them. Elijah followed instructions. He got to the brook of Cherith and sure enough, the ravens came and they fed him I don't know what Elijah was eating before he got to the brook, but I'm sure it wasn't bread and meat from ravens. Ravens are considered dirty. Ravens, they hunt, they eat raw flesh, they eat garbage, trash. And yet God gave an order to this specific bird to feed his servant. Now, what if because of the supply change? What if because of where it was coming from? What if Elijah didn't accept this food? What is it that you're not accepting that has been a supply change ordained by God because of where it's coming from, who it's coming from, when it's coming, and where? Not just that for a minute. So we, we may not be eating the same thing we were eating before the pandemic, but we're still eating. And if my memory serves me correctly, I've heard several people say that they've gained some quarantine pounds. So to me, that says they've been eating more than what they were eating before this pandemic. So God is still supplying in the drought in the pandemic when the things aren't making sense. And this isn't just about food, but anything that you need, anything that you need, God will supply. Let's look at the context of Matthew 6, 25 and through 33. We're gonna focus on verse 33 and it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Well, what are these things? The necessities of life. Don't be too proud to accept the manner that God is giving you wherever it comes from. The supply has changed, but it is still God's supply because he is the source. He's giving us resources from his fountain of source. We have to adapt and excel and flourish when the world around us is in a drought and in this pandemic. Apostle has been saying for a while now that he believes that we'll come out of this better than we went in and we will if we get to the place physically, spiritually, and emotionally that God has told us to get because his supply is waiting for us there. You know, we keep praying these prayers, talking about we're waiting on God, when God in actuality is waiting on us. If he is before time, he is the end of time. Apostle said it the other day, he is the ancient of days. So how is it that we're waiting on God? He's literally been waiting his entire existence, which cannot be measured for us. He's waiting. For us. See, we get too caught up in the when, the where, and the how. But what happens when that supply runs out? When you actually were obedient? 
You went to where he told you to go. And the supply runs out. This is what happened to Elijah. The brook dried up. The raven brought the last meal. And God gave some more instructions. He said, get the hints to a certain location. And I have another unlikely source for you. I have a widow woman that's going to feed you. You just need to get to her. I'm guilty of looking at certain things a certain way. I'm guilty of looking at, oh, this, this is not going to happen this way because I'm a problem solver. I automatically, my brain start trying to figure things out. And God has proven to me time and time again that he does not need my help in figuring me out. I just need to walk with him because he already has, has it figured out. I'm predestined. And because he has it, he's already solved. He already has the answers to whatever problem that I may encounter. He already has a way for me to get out. And at times, it depended on the where I was. I just needed to follow his instructions to get his manna. I may even have some pushback from the person that has been designated to bless me, remember the woman, the woman says, Elijah asks for water. She says, I'll give you water because that's in her bounty. That's her plenty. We usually don't have a problem giving from our plenty, but what about when we're asked to give from what we feel we lack? When she says, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that, sir, because this is my last and I'm about to go and make my son a cake. I'm going to make me a cake and we're going to die. But God, this is why you have to incline your ear to God, to know when someone is there on God's behalf. And it's a two-edged sword because Elijah had to go to this woman and had the trust in the God in her to give to him. This woman's blessing is here. And he, she has to trust in the God in Elijah in order to give him this cake. So you can, in turn, unlock blessings for whoever blesses you. That's why some people say when you're trying not, and I was like this, when someone tries to sow into me, I'm like, no. And they, they'll tell me, don't block my blessings. This is that principle. Because when they give, the Bible says God gives seeds to the sower. So when they give, they are blessed as well. You can unlock God's supply for the people that bless you. Remember she said, this woman, she said, the widow, she said she was going to cook that last meal. But because she was obedient and shared from her lack, she changed her and her son's death date because she said she was going to make that and die. So she changed her and her son's death date into a new beginning. We have to understand that some of the things that we've considered dead is really a new beginning because God has blessed it. And the crazy thing about it is I go back to the last supper when he broke the bread, blessed it, and it multiplied. When he was at, when he got the 5,000, when he fed the 5,000, he broke the bread, blessed it, and fed the 5,000. So there is a blessing in the breaking. There is supply in the breaking we have to be able to receive and give the bible says god loves a cheerful giver because what is the point of giving if you are upset about it what is the point of giving if you're just doing it for a show no he's he's measuring our hearts because he wants to release his supply based off of what he's already given us 
It's his to begin with. It is his to begin with. Elijah said to her that if you give this to me, if you feed me first from your lack, your all and your meal will not run out. Not until the rain comes again. This is the supply change. Manna came from the raven to Elijah. That changed when the brook drew up. He moved to a new location, met this widow woman and asked her for some water. She gave that, asked her for a cake and she she had a little pushback but then she when when she was definite that this was a man of God and he said if you do this then God will do this for you she made the cake and sure enough her all and her meal did not run out but that said to me that the supply would change again because he had an expiration date on how long the meal and the oil would last. He said, until the rain comes again. So what is that telling me? That tells me <laughs> we can't get comfortable in the supply, but we must get comfortable and rest in the supply Year. We cannot get comfortable in the supply, but we must get comfortable in the supplier. Then no matter what comes, you can adapt to the supply changes. The Bible says in Psalm 24 and 1 that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Everything belongs to God. And that means I will always have store credit. How, Haston? Because he said he would not withhold any good thing from me. So if he said he would not withhold any good thing from me, then surely he's going to take care of me. Surely, even though it doesn't look like what I thought it would look like, his manna is still there for me to grab it. We must learn how to accept manna from God whenever, however, wherever, and from whoever, because it is God. We get so uppity and prideful and the super saints will say stuff like, oh, I wouldn't accept that from them because they, they not saved. And see, that's why they stay exactly where they are because they miss the supply change. They were supposed to been matured out of that situation. As I talked about, transitioned out of that situation. My Bible says to me that my gifts will make room for me and place me before great men, not saved men. And then it says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. That sinner's wealth belongs to me. So I have to get in location I have to go where God has told me to go. I have to be obedient to the word of God to be able to receive the manna that belongs to me. We love quoting scripture, but when are we going to live it out? We say we're joint heirs, but when are we going to act like it? And it's hard at times. I'm not saying that it isn't. It's hard for me. Manifestation has not manifested the way that I thought it would. Yet I still am under God's care. I'm still under God's supply because I'm receiving the manna. I'm receiving his supply. It don't look like I thought it would look. It didn't come from where I thought it would come. It wasn't where I thought it would be. 
But in the obedience, when there's a supply change, I can depend on the one that said, this is his world. I can depend on the creator of the universe. I can depend on him to see me through. Let me leave you with this. There was this story. <laughs> there was this story. And this was a elder woman. She was poor and she was outside in her yard. It was a it was a fence around the yard. But she was outside in her front yard and she was just praising the Lord and praying for bread. <laughs> She was praying for God to send her bread. And there was a man, a sinner man that walked by and would hear her praying these prayers. And he would laugh and he would joke. And then he got haughty in himself. And he said, let me go buy this woman some bread and see what she does. He bought the bread. And he threw the bread over the fence. And immediately the woman began to praise God. And the man said, hold on. I bought that bread. I went and spent my money on that bread and threw it over your fence. She said, yeah, but God sent it. <laughs> we have to be careful what we don't take that has been sent by God. It may not look like what we thought it was going to look like. It may not come from where we thought it was going to come from. But if we believe Psalms 24 and 1, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, then we have to believe that everything belongs to him. So whatever I get, it is because of him. It is because of him, and it is manna, God's supply. That's going to conclude my session for today. Um, again, thank you, Apostle Moore and Pastor Leslie, for allotting me this time. Um, remember, manna is God's supply, and we have to make sure that we are accepting God's supply. We want to encourage you to join us tomorrow for Fresh Fire Friday with our Eastgate family with Pastor Anthony Petway and Lady Tanja Petway. And again, if you are not connected to a church, this is not the time to be by yourself or confused about the word. Reach out to a Bible-believing, a Bible-teaching church and i promise we will all get through through this together we need each other god's supply comes through his vessels or vessels that he sent so everyone have a good evening as apostle says be inspired be lifted and let's go manifest